everybody. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. Glad you could be here with me uh, again. Kind of everybody knows what this one's going to be about if you've seen me kind of talking about it. And I think it's someone that's kind of had a, a unique thread through the, the history of the site. Pretty much from the first year, not even the, the one year anniversary. And that person is is Amanda Bynes. Now, let me tell you up front that this is going to be two parts. I don't know how long each part's going to go. Because I just have a a place that I want to stop. In the, the narration, I guess, of the events. Just because I... It's almost the dividing line between the, uh, the Amanda Bynes that that, you know, pre-DUI arrest, basically, if we wanted to do that, and then Amanda Bynes post. And in my life, it's it's too different, because that's how I see it in my head. Because I see the Amanda that I knew before the arrest and the Amanda after. And one of the things I'm going to be talking about over these next two parts is something that I haven't really talked about before. Uh, but that it's, you know, that it's okay now, I guess, that, you know, she's she's uh, allowing me to let everybody know. Although, <sighs> it's not really, well, it's confusing, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. It's, there's there's some things that sh- she's okay with sharing, and then there's some things that are not. So I'm, you know... And then there's pieces of one that yes, and pieces of no, there aren't. So I'm trying to respect that. Um, but I wanted to, to go at this from a, a little bit different angle than, you know, normally we do. Normally, we just do, like, the deep dive kind of thing. But this is a little bit different. It's a little bit more personal because, like I said, it, it has been going on from about October 2007 to as recently as a couple months ago, maybe. Definitely March. What are we in October? So, I mean, you're talking 11 years, pretty consistent, that she has been involved, <laughs> whether. She always knew it or not, um, in the site and things like that. So I kind of wanted to let you know that I, I, I first met Amanda, um, back in 2007. I was trying to pinpoint the, the like exact day. I just remember it was after her birthday. Um, but it was right before Hairspray came out, so maybe like May or June 2007. Um, we had a mutual friend um, from What I Like About You, and so there are four of us, including her, who, who went out to dinner. And I, I remember it was after her birthday because she was still excited about turning 21, and and just that, that night was really... You know, the Amanda that I had always seen on TV, I had never met her before then. Um, I had, I'm trying to think if I had even been in the same room, and I, I don't think so. Um, but she was the exact same person that she was on TV, basically. Where she always plays that same kind of happy-go-lucky character. Um, and where, you know, she was basically always fighting with... Um, What's her face for for parts? And now I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember her name. Oh, it's going to kill me. Hillary Duff. And and like if you wanted the blonde, you got Hillary, and if you wanted the brunette, you got Amanda. But it's it's that it was that you know effervescence, and it was something that because our our gaps in seeing each other sometimes were a couple of years that. You know, you could see it more than if you, I guess, if you saw somebody every day, it would be a lot tougher. It's kind of like if you don't see somebody for a couple of years and, you know, they look way older than if you had seen them every day for the two years. 
you know, it kind of grows on you. But um, back that day, she told me a story that night that ended up in the blog um, the next day. And it was kind of an extension of, of, of something. And it was, it was, I wasn't really worried that it would get back to her, but it was um, too good of a story uh, to not make a blind out of. And uh, for anniversary month next month, uh, I will dig it out. And uh, so just for basically from the first, you know, couple of moments I met her, I mean, she was, she was dishing out stuff and she liked talking. She, she was just about to, or just had started doing press for hairspray and no one knew at that time, you know, what a monster hit it was going to be or how she would nail her part. I mean, that kind of role was her sweet spot. And you could kind of tell though, that it was kind of wearing on her. She wanted to change it. You know, she had just finished that run on the show and she wanted to do something more. But the thing is, you have to remember back in 2007, there was lots of people who wanted to do something different. You know, there was like Hilary Duff, Vanessa Hudgens, Ashley Tisdale, Lindsay Lohan. They all wanted to, Mandy Moore. You know, they all wanted to, to all of a sudden play an adult character and not these. They all basically played the same characters. It was just who you could afford and who wasn't busy. You know, I, I guess with Ashley and Vanessa, it was a little bit different because, I mean, they still had High School Musical. But it, as soon as that ended, you know, which wasn't that long after 2007, they wanted to do something different. And how has that worked out for them? It hasn't. You know, there's, there's not that many people that have made the transition. You know, somebody later, like, that's in, in, in uh, Amanda movie, Emma Stone, she made that transition. I mean, people do make that transition, but... It's tough. It, it gets narrowed. It, it gets narrowed down at each level. To how many are going to move on to to the different kind of roles? But she was she was hoping that what hairspray would do is to um, give her uh, give her the opportunity basically to be at the top of the list rather than picking like fourth, something like that. Um, and, you know, it really should have. And for some reason, it didn't. And we'll talk about that. But, you know, that's that's one of the things. Um, I remember that one of the things I took away from that, that dinner was that unlike our other meetings later or the things that she was doing later, this was just so easy breezy. It was just, it was a great night. You know, it was four people all talking, all sharing stories, and, you know, we stayed until the place closed. It, it was, I don't know, if you were a fan of Amanda, that was the kind of night that, if you had pictured in your mind, that's the kind of night that you would have. Where you felt like she was your best friend. And I have to say, I mean, it was great. And... I would, I, I never would have, at that point in time, never would have foreseen any of the things that she went through later or has gone through later. It just wasn't there. It wasn't evident. Now, you know, those, it could have been one night where she was just totally on because that's the only night that I ever remember her being exactly like that. And then every other time, the, the, it got worse and worse. But if you, the next time I saw her is if you, if you fast forward to that fall, so that would have been October, 2007, um, you know, Hairspray was a huge hit and we, we ran into each other at the improv. I was there. Um, I was going almost every month because I had some friends that were running a show basically. And they, they always wanted people to, to be there. And so I would go and. I would take other people with me and it was just kind of a cool place to hang out. It was usually like on a Tuesday or Wednesday. So it was, it, it was basically tourists and then the people that knew them. but they got some good people. It was just, you know, trying to earn a few bucks and 
They got some good people. And Thanks, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. You can uh, catch my blog seven days a week, crazydaysandnights.net. Over 100 posts, updates every single day. Uh, social media, you can find me at NT Lawyer on Instagram and on Twitter. And, of course, you can subscribe to Patreon for the full episode at patreon.com backslash NT Lawyer.